well, over eight hours of opening and sorting later, this is the result. And it goes back farther. <laughs> So GameStop had a big sale, and in the past couple weeks, I spent a lot of money on GameStop. We're talking like $7,000, and this right here is the result. And I'm looking at all this stuff thinking, man, this is going to take forever to go through. And then I walk outside this morning, <laughs> and I don't know where I'm going to put this stuff. Alrighty, so it's a few days later, and this is the close to final stack of GameStop orders. What I'm going to do, since I'm fairly sure I have almost everything here, is I'm actually going to do a couple of live openings of these and have some little Q&A and chat sessions going on, so if that's something you're interested in, those will have already be posted by the time you guys are seeing this. But in order to keep this video a little bit more timely, I'm going to cut right now to the point when all of this is opened and sorted and ready to be analyzed. Well, over eight hours of opening and sorting later, this is the result. And it goes back farther. <laughs> <laughs> this is more video games than I have ever had at one time. I'm actually going to have to move these because they won't all fit on my table. And get a load of this. The table is actually bending in the middle because there are so many games on it. Take a look at this, too. This is some of the carnage. This is a bunch of the packing material. All of these little CD holders. We got the air pouches all over here. Some of the boxes broken down over there. It's a lot of stuff. Now this is what $7,000 of GameStop games looks like. All nice and organized. You guys can probably tell I organized them based on condition right here. We have all of the very good condition games that are complete with case and manual if they included them. These are the good condition games that have just their case, and these are all the acceptable condition games that either have no original case or their case is all busted up and missing stuff. Now, I promised you guys I would keep this video short, so I'm just gonna hit some key observations here. If you're interested in knowing more of the nitty gritty about how and why I bought all of these games to resell on Amazon FBA, I have a few other opening videos where I get a little bit more into the weeds about that, so you may wanna check those out afterwards. And people keep asking me about this guy Chase after the right price. I don't know much about him, but all I know is he's probably never had a game haul this big. By the way, can I get anyone to smash that like button for that little bit of spicy smack talk there? Hashtag Team Phoenix Resale. But one of the first things that you might notice here is the distribution of the conditions of the game. So clearly we have the most acceptable games. I would say maybe about 35 or 40% in very good condition here in this big stack. Maybe 10% or so in good condition. And then we have some other miscellaneous ones up there, a little bit of retro, and the rest is going to be acceptable. Then finally on the top part of the counter here, we have what were ultimately the pleasant surprises. Starting over here, we have these are the three games that I'm actually going to be adding to my Switch collection here that I don't have. They're not really pleasant surprises, but I was hoping to get nice complete copies of each of these, which I did. Then over here, I ordered this copy of Call of Duty Modern Warfare Trilogy, and it is brand new and sealed, which is pretty uncommon for 360 games, so I was stoked about that. And then for both of these games, Box VR and Valferis, uh, they actually sent multiple new sealed copies, even though it says right here, pre-owned. So uh, I'm gonna remove those stickers and be able to sell those as new on Amazon, which will beef my margins up a little bit. So love to see that. Now, some of you may be wondering exactly how long it's going to take me to get all of this processed and sent off. 
and how much I expect to make on it ultimately. And I think I mentioned already, it took me about two days just to go through GameStop's website during their sale, scan everything, figure out what games I thought could be profitable, add them to cart, and most of these actually had a quantity limit of two per checkout. Then once I got it all at my doorstep, it took a while to unbox, open everything, and then organize it into all of these piles here, which I would have had to do anyway for my listing process. Once that's done, I need to sort these all according to the title and figure out how many of each game that I have. Then I'll go into my listing process, get stuff listed on Amazon, and once that's done, I'll be able to ship it out, send it out the door, and they will fulfill it and ship it for me when individual items sell. All told, I think it will end up being a pretty solid two weeks of work. I do work fairly long weeks, but I think I should be able to get it done in that time frame. I mentioned that I spent about $7,000 and all of the stuff that I bought here, I'm buying with the intention and the hope of at least doubling my money. And when I say doubling my money, what I mean is after fees and shipping, doubling my initial investment, though that's not factoring in other things like taxes or the cost of my time or other kinds of overhead. Now, I definitely should not forget to note that I've gotten to this point through about a year of gradually experimenting and building up my knowledge about GameStop.com and about selling on Amazon as well. And while I do think that this is a strategy that could be profitable for anybody selling on Amazon, I definitely recommend starting out smaller and building up your knowledge and your purchases gradually with one another. I would hate to have somebody watch this video, get really excited, and understand the potential that there is in GameStop arbitrage and then go off and spend a bunch of money not really knowing what they're doing, only to find out that they were buying the wrong kinds of items because there are tons of games on GameStop.com that even during sales are not going to be profitable at all. So if you're looking for more guidance on that, like I said, I do have other videos dedicated to it, and you're also welcome to drop your questions in the comments. My question of the day that I would love to have feedback from all of you on is, what is your favorite way to source video games? Are you a yard sale person? Do you frequent pawn shops or thrift stores? Do you buy online like this? Do you look for deals at video game stores? There are so many good ways to get video games for collections or for resale, and I would love to have a feel for what my viewers like to do most. In addition to that, I am now currently at 46% of people who watch my average videos are subscribed, so thank you guys so much for supporting me in that way. And in addition to that, I am now at the point where 56% of people who watch my average video are subscribed to my channel, which I really appreciate, so I wanted to say thank you for that. And if you're a part of the shrinking 44%, if you would consider subscribing, if you've gotten value out of this, I would really appreciate it. But anyways, thank you guys so much again for watching, and until next time, I will catch you on the flip.